Well, what happened? Did you save Glazer? Well, I jumped in just as D'Angelo was wrapping a light cord around Glazer's neck. Glazer threatened to sue the department. You're right, but uh, the DA cut him a deal, so he kind of forgot about it. I must say, we handled that case pretty well. Why don't you tell him what happened afterwards? Oh, yeah, the press found out about it somehow. Somehow? They made a big deal of it, as the press will do. The situation is that Megan got all the credit for the bust. And today she's a lieutenant. How do you feel about that, Dee Dee? Well, you know, we did a lot of work on this case together. I'm not saying that she didn't deserve her promotion. <laughs> what does that mean? You see, it's all clear to me now. This whole thing is about you being jealous of Megan Malone. What? I am not jealous of her. Yeah, you are. What is it with you? What, are you asleep or what? Oh, what are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Think back for just a minute. Think back to what happened three years ago. Okay, I'm thinking. Always. Oh, now he gets it. I... N Nothing ever happened between Megan Malone and me. I don't care if it... This is not about Megan. This is about after what happened, I leave for six weeks, I come back, and I needed to talk to you. I couldn't. There you were with Megan everywhere you went. You both were together. I needed to talk to you. I needed to connect with you after what happened. After what happened? Oh, just a second, please. Look, I called you twice a week. All you ever talked about was... Quantico this, Quantico that, your work. You never once brought it up. Bring what up? Well, you know, on the phone, you didn't exactly sound like... You... Wait a minute, what do you mean me bring it up? Why didn't you bring it up? Because I didn't think you wanted to bring it up. Why wouldn't I want to talk about I it? I have no idea. Oh. You see? See? Why is it that a woman always has to carry the ball in an emotional involvement? You still haven't told me what you're talking about. Right, I'll tell him. After... Before I left for Quantico... We slept together. Do either of you want to talk about it? It just sort of happened. Did he? Yeah, it just happened. We had been... Well, we were both working kind of hard. Especially McCall. She was getting ready for a trip and all. It was their wedding anniversary, and she seemed a little down, so I thought I might take her out to dinner. Well, we started the evening off talking about Steve. That was her late husband. He was killing the line of duty some years ago. It seemed to help. And by the end of the evening, she was talking about her trip to Quantico. And her mood was really up. We were having a lot of fun that night. We didn't want it to stop. So when uh, so I took her home, dropped her off, she invited me in for a cup of coffee. I came inside and we talked. We talked more than most married people do. And just this once, it all seemed to hit me. It hit her too.
The next morning, you left for Quantico. Yeah. How did you feel? Great. I felt great. Didn't even bother me that I was leaving town the next morning. It was really nice having him, having you there in the morning and, you know, waking up together. I knew that this wasn't going to be a pattern or anything. That was probably the only time that that would happen. But still, it was, it was very special. So then what happened? Well, then he made me breakfast. <laughs> it was a fabulous breakfast. <laughs> Except for the eggs. It was. Did you two talk about it? No. What about later? You never talked about it? No, and I wish we had. At the time, I guess, I felt that nothing needed to be said. Maybe we were both just too afraid to say anything. And I was busy packing for the airport. Probably conveniently busy, you know what I mean? And he helped me pack, and we drove to the airport. We kissed goodbye, and I left. And six weeks later, I walk in, and I see you with Megan, who's sitting at my desk. I mean, I felt like I was looking at my replacement. And you didn't even seem to care that I was back or that I was even there. Well, that's not true. Well, but that's the way I felt. No, but you know I never meant that. And after Megan left... Well, after she left, it was just like... You know, we turned the clock back. It was as if it never happened at all. Except it did happen. What about you, Rick? How did you feel? I thought about it a lot. No, no. I asked you how you felt. I felt great. I thought it was terrific. I'm glad it happened. But as time went on, I just pushed it aside. Look, what happened between us evolved. I just didn't think it needed to be explained at the time. And then the more time that went by, the more I pushed it away, the more I, the more I got afraid of looking at it. I didn't want to risk losing my friendship with her. I didn't want to lose my partner. Excuse me, that's the emergency line. Yes. Okay, I'll tell them. That was for you. Lieutenant Malone wants to see you right away. Quite a week. Glad this case is over with. <laughs> Me too. Look, I, I want to apologize to you again. I this should have never have happened. I uh, this is a monumental blunder on my part, and I should have confronted the issue from the outset. I had my part in it too, though. You know. I apologize. I'm sorry. Look, we have to make a pact. If anything like this ever happens again, we speak up immediately. Absolutely. No matter what it is, no matter what comes up, confront it and talk about it right then, okay? Absolutely. It's a deal. Deal. Okay. Want to come in for coffee? 